I am going to do a stream today to show you guys my new character animating, character animator settings. So let me switch to show you guys my character animator avatar, which if you've seen my stream before, you're familiar with her, my little purple haired puppet named Eenie Bean. And if you haven't heard before, I use Adobe Character Animator, which is this over here. Side of the screen over here. If I zoom into it, this is the panel. Now, the only thing that isn't showing on here that you would see if you were in your own character animator is a window that's called camera and microphone. For my own privacy purposes, I have just uh, turn that off because I like to use my avatar and have my face be a mystery. So uh, if you were looking in, you would be able to see a camera right about here and you would see the, the face matching up with the character animation. This is the really cool thing about Character Animator is that you can do live streaming with your character animator. So. The new things that I've done with my puppet that I wanted to show you guys are that I set it to breathe. Now let me show you big screen. Watch my shoulders. Do you see how they're going up and down? So that's a breathe function that you can set up in Character Animator. Let me show you how. So within Character Animator, you go back into the Rig setting and you select the layer that you want to have this Breathe function, which in my situation is Body. If I show or hide the layer, you'll see which one I'm talking about. So here's the, the Body layer. is my head and shoulders and shirt turn it off, turn it on. So this body layer, when I select it, you can see it already has this breathe option set. Now, the way I did that before this was set up was I clicked on the body layer and then I added a behavior. See right here, behaviors. This is in the properties tab. And I added breathe. Once you select that for that layer, you can adjust the breathe settings. This is also available in the stream once it's set up. But right now I have my uh, puppet set to breathe, or really just this layer of the puppet set to breathe for 20 breaths a minute and the scale of 105 to 100. So let me show you in stream because you can actively see the change. So here in stream, if I go to the breathe settings over here, I can change, for example, and let me zoom in on my puppet just a smidge. I can change the breaths per minute per minute, say 50. Now she's breathing much faster, see that? Or I can go really fast, let's say 150. Now she's hyperventilating, basically. But I like a nice kind of calm 20. I'll set it back to that. Another thing you can change is the scale. So this max and min scale show the extent to which the body layer is impacted by the breathe option. So the minimum scale is 100. It goes back down to what it started with. And the max scale is how big it gets. So I have it set to just 105. So we're only seeing a 5% increase with each breath. Let's set it up to something crazy. So all of a sudden, with every breath, my body layer is getting huge. Look very hulky here. So you can really increase that. But I like just a small, just a small increase to 105%. And I think that gives a nice little motion even when your character's at rest. Even if you're sitting there just playing a game and not really moving around much, you can still have this breath happening. Now if you make the change here in stream, you can set it back to the puppet 
push behavior parameters to source puppet. So we'll send that back there. So that's the breathe option, which I think is really cool. The other thing that I've set up is getting triggers to happen based on not just keystrokes, but also on behaviors um, or moves. I don't know the exact term for it, but basically I can do something with my head and it will trigger a behavior or launch a trigger, I think is the term. So you can see here these controls that I have, like this heart. If I press one, oh, wrong one, this heart. If I press four, this little heart pops up. If I press five and hold down five, this no option comes up. Now, this is great if I was just doing character animation within Character Animator, but I'm not. I'm using it for live streaming games. So most of the time I've got my keyboard focus in a game and I can't just hit number five. Now if I had something sweet like an Elgato stream deck or something like that, I could probably just press a button and have that happen. But I don't have that yet and it's not, you know, maybe Christmas yet. Maybe I'll get one for Christmas, but I don't have one now. So what I've done is mess around with this really neat option, I think, um, where I can tag it to um, a body movement. The way I did that is within Rig, I set up a head turner behavior on the puppet overall. So you select your overall puppet here. In my case, it's named Rin. That's because I uh, used as a basis, and I've made a ton of edits to her now, but one of the sample puppets that Character Animator gave um, with the software. So Rin, I have added a function to, head turner. That's down here, it's one of the behaviors. Sorry, I used the term function, I meant behavior. I'm still learning the terminology here. So what I did was I selected head turner here. Then I picked the things I wanted to tie to the head turn functions and I tagged them. So as an example, there's hearts. This is the thing I showed you before that press when you press four, the little heart comes up and pops up. So this now is associated with not only you press the number four, but also here under tags, you can see it's associated with this downward look. So the behavior head turner uses this downward look tag say that when I look down, this trigger, this heart animation will show up. So let me show you in stream. Now remember, I can press the number four or click this visual trigger here to pull up that heart. There it is, right? But if I also just look down, and you can't see this because, again, I don't have the webcam showing. But if I just look down, this little heart will get triggered. I'm looking down. Now I'm looking back at the screen. Now I'm looking down. Now I'm looking back at the screen. So instead of having to press the number four, which if, if I'm in a game, I'd have to click over to Adobe Character Animator and press four. Um, because a four in my game doesn't do anything. I need to focus on that app. Now, there may be some technical way to get a hot key to focus in another app, and I just haven't figured that out yet. But I think it's also cool to be able to tie it to a face motion so that I don't have to press anything at all. I just look down. And then, I love you. I press, I press nothing at all, but my heart, my heart is on my sleeve. Or next to my head, as it were. And then um, another one that I think is neat, because often when I play a game, my reaction when I mess something up is to throw my head back and kind of do this Anakin, like, no. And look, there it is. This is me putting my head back. And what that's done is automatically pulled up this number five action, this no that I made. This is. This so I can either just 
press no or I can hold down five and it shows up by the way I've used a fader behavior on this so that it fades in and out over a period of a couple seconds but I've tied it to um, a head movement so if I go back into rig, rig I will show you so just like in hearts I've created a new layer which really is just a bubble and a text and I've added a fader behavior to it so that's down here now you have to make sure you have the right layer selected so I have the fader set up for five seconds which means it takes five seconds to fully fade in and then five seconds to go away but the really cool thing at least I think is that I also have it tied to this upward uh, face behavior so like you saw when I and actually let me go back out to the bigger screen so when I look up oh I'm not pressing any buttons all I'm doing is putting my head up and again if I look down I'll get a little heart but fader is still closing out that last one Go. looking down back to the straight ahead and I'm looking up it's a pretty cool trick I think so between the breathe options that I've set up and the uh, behavior face turner behavior things I'm really getting hang well, I don't know if I'm really getting a hang but I'm really enjoying using the character animator to make my animated avatar during my streams. So I hope you've enjoyed this little, I guess, semi-instructional video, but I guess I'm more just showing off these neat tricks I've figured out how to use in character animation. Um, so that's about it. Thanks for tuning in to Eenie Bean's channel. And uh, I'm sure I'll figure out some more uh, neat things to do with character animator over time. Thanks for tuning in and have a good one.